Right, we've got our coupling made, we've cut the metal, we've bent it to shape, it's all ready to fit. We've drilled the holes in the buffer beam, so now we can go ahead and put the coupling in and try it for size. So what we need to do is get our class 37 locomotive, as I say, make sure that the ends are nice and smooth, there's no raggy edges on them because it does help when you're trying to get it through the holes. Line it up with the holes, get one leg in and the other leg in and you can see that's it gone in there. So there's the coupling fitted into the into the class 37, you can see it in place there. Okay, now before we can glue it into place, there's one more measurement that we'll have to make. And that is the distance from the coupling is from the uh, the front end of the body. The first time I've done these couplings I made the mistake of measuring from the buffers out over and it, it, that was wrong. You have to measure from the front edge of the front edge of the body here, not the buffers. Okay, and what we're looking for is we're looking for a measurement of about eight millimeters. Okay, so I'm gonna to have to angle this again so I can see what I'm doing. Um let's have a look. Um That's, um, let's see, I'm just trying to see, just angle this to the light. Yep, yeah, that's pretty much okay there where it is. Now bear in mind, of course, the coupling has to be bent, the coupling has to be bent down um, in order to engage with the uh, the tension lock couplings on your rolling stock. But uh, you can use this this hole as a little bit of a guide, um, you know, that, that where the tension lock coupling was fitted into. You can use that as a bit of a guide, bending your new coupling down to that, because that's pretty much the height it has to be. But I tend to, um, I like to put the locomotive on a bit of track um, with, a, with some rolling stock and just bend it up or down or whatever it needs, just trial and error till you get it right. But uh, as I say, that, that, that measurement there that we've just done is um, pretty much okay there. I'm just going to double check it again because sometimes the tension lock coupling will move before you get it glued in, but that's that's pretty much stayed in place there. So what we'll do is flip it over upside down um, and we need to get it glued into place. Now this one is actually going to um, it's going to, the the, uh, the ends on this one is a little bit too long. They're just in the way of, of the uh, the screws there that hold the body on. So as I say, that isn't a problem. Once the tension, once the new coupling's glued into place, we can simply bend the excess metal on the inside out the way to clear the screw so you can get, you know, you can still get the body off. But right, what we'll do is, let's get some glue on here. Which is a little bit difficult to get this to stand up. Which is there. Right, as I say, I'm using the uh, the grip thin super glue, so we'll get that ready. Get the top off. We'll activator to make the glue go off a bit quicker. Take the top off. Get the old paint brush ready. And um, I've got a little piece of wire somewhere. What I use as a as a sort of dropper, just because you're only using you know just one drop at a time. That's all we're using. So we'll get the super glue now. Try and get the bogey out of the way a little bit better. Right, so what we're doing is we just want a drop. That's just a load of it come out there. There, we've got to just I don't know if you can see that on the on the little pin, but uh, we'll just put it at the front. Put it at the front on the brass bar. Now I know you'll probably not be able to see what I'm doing here. <clears throat> um I could have done with the the camcorder being zoomed in a bit, but uh, I've put a little drop on at the front of the on the buffer beam and I've just put a drop on on the back there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the activator okay, and just dab that on and dab that on at the back and that should turn that off within a couple of seconds. Clean the brush up straight away which is quite important because as I say the activator tends to go off uh, on the brush um, and it, it, it does make the bristles go very hard but anyway that's that's it that's okay it's nice and still nice and flexible the brush right so we've got that side glued in we can just check it and that's quite that's quite strong there so what we need to do is we need to go ahead and do the same on the other side okay again drop of glue there we go Bring that down. There we go. Once again, I've got my activator. 
Dab it on. There we go. The thinners, cellulose thinners, or well, rather standard thinners, that's what I'm using. Um, I couldn't get cellulose thinners, the shop that I went to, the car accessory shop, I just sold the last can so I had to get standard thinners, but it does the same job. Right. Okay, let's put the tops back on everything, in case anything gets knocked over. Top back on the glue, put them out of the way. Right. Okay, that's the coupling glued in place there now. Now sometimes when you start and bend the coupling down t to set the height, the glue does break sometimes, which it's just, it, all you have to do is, is just put some more glue on and some more activator on that and then that's fine. It'll be fine again. Okay, but uh, that feels quite strong there now to me. So what I'm going to need to do now is I say we need to set the height on it. We need to get the correct height uh, for the tension lock couplings on the rowing stock. So all we do is, using that, the, the hole there as a guide, just sort of get a hold of it and just if you can see what I'm doing here is just a case of just pull it down gently with your thumb like that like that's um, we'll try that that might be okay okay so what we need is a piece of track put the logo on okay Logo on the track. It's best to put it on a piece of track because obviously you need you need to have track to set the height. Otherwise, you you would never get it right just messing on with it on a cutting mat. Okay, so we've got the logo on. Backman brake van. Put that on the track and just slide the brake van up to it and see what happens with the coupling. Now there, you can see there it just hasn't engaged with the coupling at all on the logo. I don't know if you can if you can make that out. But the coupling is clearly too low. Okay, so we need to just we just need to check by eye how far it needs to go up, just a little bit, not too much. I normally find that when you're bending the coupling back up, that's when the glue breaks. But that's uh, that's gone up okay there. Right, so we'll put on the track again. Right, that's on the track. Make sure it's on the track properly, and we'll try the brake van again. You can see there now, it's engaged with the coupling. Okay, the way to test it is, if you can hold the lo get, get a hold of the locomotive, put some weight on it, and then with your, your rolling stock, you need to press against the coupling quite, quite hard. And if you can get it so the coupling doesn't go underneath or over, you know, on the, uh, on the locomotive, if your rolling stock coupling, rather, doesn't go underneath or over the locomotive coupling, then that's at the right height, which that is, that's spot on there now. So if we take the brake van off, and I'll let you have a look at that again. You can see that the coupling, as I say, it comes out a little bit further than the buffers, and the reason for that is, is because sometimes, when you've got the locomotive coupled up to something, the edge of the uh, hook, if the, if the coupling's not long enough, the edge of the hook can actually foul anything that you've got on the buffer beam. And cause derailment so that way you're not going to have that problem with that like that but uh, yep that looks that looks spot on there as I say that's that's what it looks like when it's painted so uh, a little bit of matte black paint so and that's 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 the new one made so I hope the uh, I hope the video has been of some use to you anyway as I say I think it looks I think the logo looks better without the tension lock couplings on so I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope it's as I say I hope it's been of some use to you so we'll hope to speak to you soon thanks a lot bye